right, let's do another quick uh, intro to a new feature in uh, Animation Menu. There are now two sub-menus here that we may not have seen in earlier versions. Open uh, an animation into the selection and also creating an animated swap image. So that's kind of new. And uh, I mean, the animated selection is something that we already had initially in the Curve tool where you could create a curve and perhaps have it track somebody's face and um, have that curve then map into the alpha channel. So you have some robo tools here and use curve as alpha, right? So <clears throat> that curve then can also be animated and you can create keyframes for the curve and across an animation therefore have a alpha channel that's changing like a match tracking uh, object and you could do all sorts of things uh, with that through that. You can blur it through that. You can do all sorts of other filtering effects with that. But there is also the animation now of the swap image. And we've uh, actually introduced that in one or two other places. Uh, the swap image itself is is a feature in Dog Waffle that's really key and hard, at the heart of the, the, uh, the painting engine. Because when you look at the layers, you can have layers, and that's one thing, uh, you can uh, have a layer one, you can add another layer and so on. But so what you have here in one layer could be a painting and then you can have another layer which maybe is at a different color. And you know, as, as we don't uh, have these as opaque layers, it's going to multiply or combine these layers in some way. Um, but you can still do all sorts of uh, other types of uh, combinations there. And you can have the layer mode. By default, it's a multiply, but you can have the layer mode be something different and it gives you all sorts of compositing effects. You can uh, use that to uh, have one image modify the other in some other ways. And so mm -hmm. the the idea, in fact, you can even use magic pink or drop magenta to key to that color and make it opaque if it's any other color. So you can actually simulate uh, opaque layers with that, especially great for cartooning and animated uh, or illustrated comics. Uh, if you don't use pink or magenta, you can basically, or, or any other color like green screen or blue screen, <clears throat> you can use that as the placeholder for uh, opaque and then anything else uh, for transparent. It's going to be the identifier for transparent color. And <clears throat> it will show the colors of the layers underneath it, <clears throat> which of course could be still green and blue as well. So, <clears throat> but that's that's all. <clears throat> I'm sorry, here I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a sneeze attack here. Um, <clears throat> The, the thing I want to focus on now at this time is uh, the, the new feature, which is to animate an, um, an image sequence, to, to have an image sequence as an animation in the swap image. All right, so what I'll do here is, I'll, let's say we start with, by painting something in the main image, and then we'll swap over, there's this swap shortcut here to switch over to the swap image, and we load something different, and maybe that's a different color, and it's something like this. Or it might be, uh, I don't know, a random, uh, let's render some uh, plasma noise. There you go. All right, and so we go back and we see here that we are in the swap image in the, in the title bar. It will show you if you're looking at the swap or the main image. <clears throat> and I'm going to swip, switch back here. And there's also a shortcut for that image. Jump, there it is. You can <clears throat> jump back and forth between those. All right, so that's the same here. Shortcut to that, and shortcut J for jumping. So on the keyboard, and so uh, this image can be affected, or modified, or combined, or in other ways, you know, uh, under control or combined with the swap image. And under the filter menu, you see ways to say, for instance, combining the two, right? Mixing the two buffers, one way or another, by like giving some preference for one or the other. And then there's other things you can do with that, such as compositing the two or uh, displacing, <laughs> displacing the image that you see in the foreground by the image that's in the background, right? So that creates all sorts of great textures for marble designs and all sorts of other funky effects. Well, if the image in the foreground is an animation, right? If we create an animation here in the foreground, then we would either want that image in the background to still be usable as a displacement tool or as a combination. But even better, we'd like that image to also frame for frame to also be an animation in itself. 
So you can uh, already, in the past, you've been able to do things like this here, where you say, okay, let's go, and uh, on the first frame, I know there is an image that's a swap image behind it, and I'd like to go to displace it. Right? I want to displace this image on this frame, but I want to do that for every frame that I have here. So as you cycle through that, you want that displacement to even be keyframeable and, and modifiable over time. And it does that. So that's, that's something that we already do. <clears throat> but the next thing now is what if we actually have that animation already also for the back for the swap image sequence. And that's exactly where uh, we're talking about now in the animation menu to load such an animation either from a file that you saved here from the animation menu here at the top and that could be a DWA file in that case or you could have saved it as an AVI and the other option is to uh, load it actually from an AVI file that you created perhaps in a different program such as Imposer or Carrara, Bryce, whatever. You have an animation of some sort in an AVI file, uh, preferably the same number of frames, preferably, though it doesn't have to be exactly, but uh, also preferably the same dimensions as what you're working here. Uh, working with here and uh, so that's what we're talking about is to, to load that animation into the swap or, or assign that animation as a swap image and have it therefore frame for frame change over time so let's uh, let's have a look at that let's let's create one of those uh, or load one of those first of all let's take a look at the two animations I'm working with so I have an AVI let's load it and it's this one here that's the chaos Right, and uh, as we know now, we can actually say what the first frame is we want to load and what the last one is. This one has 120 frames going from 0 to 119. Let's open it and just do a quick preview, and there it is. So it's yeah, it's chaotic, and there's some sort of uh, a looping animation in the background, some blue to red tones, and also some snowfall in two different directions, just to create a little bit of interesting animation chaos there. All right, so the other animation is an animation that was rendered, of course, in a popular uh, uh, character animation program in uh, Poser in this case and it goes from 0 to 119 and this one actually I rendered again uh, against the green screen because ultimately I want to composite this guy against some other background and uh, one color based technique to do that is to uh, to green screen it because that's also how you would shoot it in the real world if with real life uh, characters against the green screen and the other technique the other reason is that in an AVI file it is rare to find a codec where you can also uh, keep the alpha channel and the alpha channel is uh, usually lost so uh, it depends on the codec the compressor that you use uh, when you save to AVI and whether you have that alpha channel in the first place so in some programs uh, like Carrara and others you might actually be able to save the alpha channel in an AVI file if you choose the proper codec. I didn't do that here. I saved it just RGB and uh, made sure therefore that the green background color can be used to later do some uh, some elimination of it. So uh, the trick is uh, to have this animation, this running dude in the foreground and the other animation that I was looking at a little bit earlier. Let's load it one more time. This one here. Uh, let's load this one into the background. So right now I'm looking at it in the foreground. This is the main buffer I'm looking at here. Yep, main image sequence. And that's where this is. So what I need to do now really is to load into the animated swap buff image, or, or rather assign as that, that same animation, this backdrop. And it's going to give me, uh, when things are all working right, it's going to give me that same preview where I can say, okay, I want only a portion of it, because maybe my animation where I'm going to load this into is not that long. But I'm going to load it right there, assign it. And now I'm going to load into the foreground, load AVI the traditional way into the main buffer. I'm going to load my uh, running dude. And that one's obviously going to be the one we see now. We still have in the background, though, our swap animation and coming from the chaotic background uh, animation, the AVI file. So now we have the two, we can combine the two, we can click here and we see that that's doing that traditional uh, multiply. So green with a reddish background gets really dark and we can also scrub through that. Uh, let's go with it. <laughs> and you see that both of them animate. So the background is no longer just a static image, it's now an animation. And that's the magic right there. And of course, since we are there, the next step would be to uh, do the green screen across the entire sequence. 
so that the running dude is there but the background here the green part goes away so we go to the timeline and we composite the two you can really do that in a couple of different ways but probably the most intelligent one is to simply say um, they're composite with uh, swap right and do a green screen composite composition so now you see in the preview here that the green goes away and the background the true background is showing but also the character is still there because that one's not green and you could go with uh, different low clips and high clips there uh, be careful not to make it too transparent though I think the default values are usually quite nicely uh, chosen here and you can choose uh, you know is this an artificial green or not uh, a little bit more uh, even distribution of it um, if you if you do have some fuzzy green edges that show it's perhaps because of anti-aliasing that was used during the render so one thing I like to do is actually render my pose a relatively high resolution but without anti-aliasing so that I, I do get a very crisp transition from the foreground jeans blue color to the background green color anyway whichever way you do this we combine frame for frame the animation in the foreground with the animation in the swap bar image and now we do have the two composited into a single animation and as you save that out to an AVI uh, I'm going to choose uh, let's say this needs to be playing by default at 30 frames a second I'm going to say where to save it and we'll call that uh, running dude uh, on green green no more right it's uh, with background chaos there you go make it a really long file name and um, is that too long no okay it's good and uh, we need to also save it okay there it is and of course uh, the codec the compressor that you want to use I would use something that is lossless if you still are going to work with this or for archival purposes you don't want it to be affected by any sort of loss of color or loss of frames some codecs will drop the last frame some codecs will only work with certain dimensions in your image I'm at 512 by 512 here so that should work with most codecs I know Lagariff is one I like a lot because it's uh, it's lossless it's free and it's very fast to compress sometimes even faster than XVID depending on the settings and in theory it can also save the an alpha channel now we don't do that here in, in our code but uh, most importantly it's multi-threaded it's lossless lossless is really important in this case so I'm gonna choose that and save this entire animation and uh, then when we actually view it well, I'm viewing it here, right there in if and view, but it's probably if and view may be configured right now to use the hardware uh, channel, so it's not actually showing in the in the screen capture. I will need to uh, to view that separately. We can see it right here. Um, right click that, and I don't know if it's going to open. Yeah, it's still opening it in if and view. I need to open with ouvrir avec in French. Uh, Windows Media Player, Lecto Windows Media. Hopefully this one displays and captures okay, because I don't know. We'll see that in a second. <clears throat> so, but anyway, this this is the technique where you have now the ability in Dog Waffle to combine or merge two sequences of uh, animations that are each in their own AVI file. And uh, so that's that new feature. Not in the public beta yet. Um, we are now at uh, point sixty four. So um, you're going to have to wait for that one uh, coming up in version 9, probably sometimes in September. We may have an intermediate update in between for those who have already bought or pre-ordered version 9. So uh, stay tuned and hang in there. Uh, we'll have lots more new features coming and it'll be fun.